Hi, welcome to the first episode of my Azure migration series, where I'll be showing you how to migrate your application from on-premise to in the cloud. Now I've got some nice Azure logos in the background on this create resource screen, and we're gonna just have that there to look at so you don't have to look at my face throughout the whole thing. So throughout the series, we're gonna have a load of short and easy implementations of each feature that you'd want in Azure migration. It'll let you quickly get a proof of concept, which is going to give you faith that you can then implement it in your wider system rather than having to do everything all at once. From my experience, this is particularly beneficial when your business doesn't allow for big migrations due to time and budget restraints, and it will let you start small and then grow big when necessary. You can scale all of your features out when it makes sense to. Now, we've got a demo project for this, which looks bad on purpose, and the aim of that was to try and mimic a typical legacy project you would find in your own system really. It's not too bad, but um, hopefully it'll do the job and hopefully it will show off some of the challenges you might face when doing an Azure migration. So here we have the project. It's a .NET 7 web API written C sharp for an imaginary role playing game shop. Functionality in here isn't really perfect. There's sort of a couple of flaws all over the place, but really it's just an example. So we'll live with it. It's got two different types of endpoint, one for stock, and then there's another one down here for sales. And you will notice as we go through, it does look awful in very obvious ways in places. And that is all on purpose, trust me. There'll be two different types of user for this. There'll be the full staff and then the management sort of role. And as we go on, we'll add actual permissions to these endpoints to make sure that they're restricted to the right kind of person. The app uses both NoSQL and SQL. If I go up here, we have a database for each. So for in this instance, we're using SQL Server here, and we've got MongoDB for NoSQL. I've got both types in there. They both have their own specific use cases, but also mostly to show off the migration of both of these kinds of service. And both of these database types will be moved to native in the cloud, but there'll also be a step in the middle to show what happens if you don't necessarily want to go native straight away, usually due to time and cost constraints. The application also uses file logging, which we're gonna keep in because it might be relevant for some business cases, but we're gonna change it instead of being on the file system, on the operating system, to being in Azure blob storage. So you can maintain the same functionality, but remove any dependencies. So here, I'll just do a really quick run through of some of the code and we'll just look over it really briefly to see what we've got. So this is a typical .NET controller. We've got basic calls, logic in here, which is really basic and poorly handled with exceptions, calls to the database, many different calls to databases and, and logic here, stuff that realistically you don't want to be seeing, especially in a controller class like this. Um, we've got some classes here, which are just used for models. We've got file logging stuff, which is just basic. No SQL stuff here. We've got the SQL stuff here. Again, this is uh, not thrilling to look at, and there's also some pretty glaring issues with some of the stuff in here, which we will address as part of the migration. It's all planned, don't worry. Um, and again, at the end, another model here, which, which again, will be moved somewhere nicer to read rather than just sitting in a big directory like we've got here at the side. So I've already mentioned some of the services that we're going to be using in this, such as the database migration and blob storage. There's also going to be a whole load of stuff to make sure the entire application is maintainable, stable, performant throughout its whole lifetime. It's going to be heavily driven by a pipeline, which we're going to use Azure DevOps for. And we're going to make sure the code is tested fully. It's fault tolerant. We're going to have deployment, rollback, lots of nice stuff you'd see in a pipeline and really anything that I personally would want as a bare minimum in any project I have out in the world that has an important business case. A lot of the refactoring we do as well is going to be focused around pulling things out so we can start moving towards a microservices architecture, which is obviously a massive, massive benefit we have to the cloud, along with all of the scaling and performance and just everything the cloud helps us achieve with that. And we're going to achieve this by using Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, Azure Containers, and they work alongside all of the other Azure services that help provide a serverless architecture for us. So to achieve all this, we're going to be using primarily the Azure portal to create all of our resources because it's, it's easy to use, it's nice to look at, it's easy to follow along with, especially if you're doing this for the first time and especially if you want to do all this manually. 
at some point throughout the project, we'll add infrastructure as code in the form of bicep. But for each feature, what we're going to do is add it in the UI and then add the bicep template in with the examples. There will be code examples and bicep templates and any other kind of examples you need for everything in the whole project to make sure not only do you have instructions on how to do this, but you also have examples that you can take away and use in whatever project you want, commercial, personal. It's up to you. You can use everything I tell you completely for your own stuff. So here's the GitHub repo. There'll be a link for this in the description below and in all of the videos, so it's easy to find. Here we'll have a collection of all of the example projects we use for each video. For each of these projects, I'm going to copy and paste the last one and make any new changes in that one. I asked a load of people if they prefer that I did this in branches or a whole new project, uh, and they like the project approach more. And to be honest, I did too. It makes it so much easier to see. So there's going to be a whole load of those here. And then we've got readmes here containing the instructions on how to set everything up. If you want to follow along with everything I do, feel free to follow all of this. If there's only bits of it you want to follow along with, feel free to just do those bits or feel free to not use any of this at all and just take any code bits you want just straight from the projects themselves along with the instructions on how to use them from the video. There's also a tools project. If I go back here, this also contains some SQL setup just for some example data for the application. Again, if you don't want to use that, you don't have to, but if you want to follow along exactly like I do, it's in here and this will set up everything for you by running that. So hopefully that covers everything and there's something in there that sounds interesting to you. If you're interested in learning more about Azure and you need some quick, easy videos to either brush up on skills or learn new skills and help with your own implementations, come back and check out what we've got and hopefully you'll find something cool in there. Thanks.